Hi everybody, this is Jack, otherwise known as Recontra One, with my 1800th video. And I'm videoing this uh, outside today, so you might hear an occasional rumble of thunder because it's the usual rainy season here in Florida. And uh, I thought today, uh, first of all, I want to talk to uh, all my viewers and commenters and thank you again for your great comments and your viewership. I really uh, wouldn't be doing this if I didn't uh, have such sustained uh, positive reinforcement doing it. And I uh, thought today I would talk to you a bit about uh, the Chevrolet Vega. And my exposure to Vega was uh, set in 1974 with the uh, oil crisis. At that point, uh, <laughs> people were panicking. Uh, you almost had to live during that period to realize how bad things were. Uh, oil was uh, in short supply. Gas was being uh, essentially rationed. And uh, in some states, uh, it was on an odd, even license plate uh, uh, method to, to get gas. So even numbered uh, cars would be getting gas Monday, Wednesday, Friday, odd numbered uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and uh, maybe Sunday for everybody. So that was uh, that was the way it was back in the day. And uh, many many uh, gas stations uh, kind of rationed their the fuel that they got and gave preference to their long-term customers, which you can't blame them. Uh, when uh, <laughs> these gas stations would be closed, and suddenly somebody appeared at uh, the door of the gas station, and uh, probably the owner, and you had the feeling that they were turning the gas pumps on because they had had a delivery. Well, you wouldn't believe how quickly cars found their way into that gas station uh, lot. Unbelievable. <laughs> People developed great peripheral vision. They could uh, tell when a gas station uh, showed any signs of activity at all. And if it did, zoom, they went right into the gas station. And a lot of times the amount of gas you could get uh, was uh, limited. So that's how they dealt with it and people uh, we're starting to buy compact cars, and the Chevy Vega was introduced as a 1971 model. So already had uh, a, a definite base of uh, ownership. But uh, 1974 really made those jump numbers jump because people were very conscious about, uh, about mileage. And with a, with a Vega, I would say, with manual transmission, I really didn't make a habit of uh, calculating mileage, but I'd say probably around 30 miles to the gallon. Uh, the Vega I had uh, bought in 1974 was the Vega hatchback with uh, the regular standard engine with the uh, one barrel carburetor and uh, four speed uh, manual transmission. Uh, the uh, car was uh, a light yellow. It was a pretty car. I like that. And uh, it, it, uh, the seats were comfortable. The upholstery uh, was, uh, was pretty good. It didn't wear out. Uh, and when I was looking for the car, I uh, was trying to get the best deal. And the best I could get was uh, <laughs> sticker price. For the car. Now this is during the gas crisis. Sticker price for the car and uh, they gave me five uh, silver dollars. Uh, that was it. Uh, <laughs> so they were getting, they were doing quite well with that. Uh, of course their margins weren't very good on, I'm sure on a Vega, but still uh, that was, that was a very, <laughs> very uh, good deal for them, bad deal for the purchaser. So anyhow, uh, this car served as a going-to-work car, and I kept it for about, let's say, three years. 
And well, maybe it was longer than that. I have to think about that. Yeah, about three years. That's about right. Uh, and I sold it privately. And at that point, it really had nothing wrong with it. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about the history of the mechanical problems of the Vega. But <clears throat> my Vega, by 74, they had a good number of them were under control. And, uh, however, uh, the guy I sold it to told me, I saw him uh, a little bit afterwards, he said, you know, the car was in good shape when you sold it to me, but then rust uh, attacked and the car almost disintegrated overnight. So, mechanically it was okay, but uh, that was one of the big problems of Vega, is rust, big time rust. Uh, and uh, it, um, the fenders were particularly vulnerable, and the cowl area. Uh, those were the two areas where the, the car was rust-proofed, but the, the, uh, it was dipped in a vat, and there was an air, there was air interfering with the rust-proofing getting to the tops of the undersides of the fenders, and uh, also there was a problem getting it up into that uh, into the cowl area. So that cowl area was essentially untreated and unpainted. So it wasn't too surprising when leaves and other debris got in there and uh, started the rust process. So then you had a bunch of problems there. The other problem that bedeviled Vega was their attempt at uh, a novel uh, engine, and that engine had an aluminum block. They added some regular metal to that aluminum, brought some steel to the aluminum, and called it sintered aluminum. And they cast it, sand cast it, and uh, this was supposed to be a durable engine. <clears throat> well, to make matters more interesting, they decided to go with an uh, overhead cam and a uh, cast iron head. So the, uh, <laughs> the two metals here, uh, the aluminum block and the cast iron head, were separated by a, uh, a gasket. And now that gasket had to allow for the differential heating and cooling uh, indexes of cast iron and uh, aluminum, which are different. So right away, uh, that, that gasket was put under some strain. And these uh, cylinders were Siamese, so any overheating that, uh, that happened and, by the way, it was likely the car would overheat because the radiator was quite small, uh, it would distort those cylinders. And once that happened, uh, coolant would leak into the oil, oil would leak into the coolant, and eventual destruction of the engine. So this was a bad design, and one that became very obvious. I checked a little bit into the history of Vega, and it really was a uh, GM design car as opposed to a Chevrolet design car. So from the perspective uh, of who was responsible for it, Chevrolet essentially was given the job of dealing with this car that was already uh, blueprinted by General Motors. So it was up to them to figure out how to remedy any defects in the design. So, uh, on with the problems. I remember talking to somebody who told me that uh, the, their 72 or 73 model, by the way, the car was uh, made from model year 71 through 77, uh, that she had gone through three engines, three engines. Uh, and evidently, uh, people were given the choice of another uh, short block uh, aluminum, or uh, one with a uh, one with 
cast iron cylinder liners, well, which would have made that, you know, opening much more, uh, the cylinder opening much more stable than the uh, sintered aluminum. They also blamed the, they also blamed the pistons for not having a, a thick enough uh, coating. And uh, these cars also used oil. And that was blamed on uh, the on um, valve uh, stem uh, seals that were inadequate for the job. So, <laughs> poor Vega and poor owners of the Vega. Uh, needless to say, uh, with this many cars requiring fixes, uh, it was not the best for Chevrolet's reputation or General Motors for that matter. Uh, as a result, uh, people were saying, no more GM cars for me. And if they wanted a small car, guess who was making small cars? Uh, <laughs> Toyota, Nissan, they would all be very happy to uh, supply you with a with a car that uh, didn't have such kind of uh, manufacturing defects and or even just engineering defects. So uh, another situation, the, the rust problem was so bad that Chevy was giving people, all you had to do was ask, giving people with the early Vegas new front fenders just uh, saying, you know, that one rusted out, uh, give me a new one, and they did. <laughs> so, uh, that was my Vega. So I was lucky with that one. Uh, no real mechanical problems. It lasted about three years, and I got satisfactory service from it, and it got me through fuel crisis. Now, I can also speak of two other Vegas, both Cambacks. Uh, that uh, was their two-door station wagon. They had that four-door station wagon. Uh, and one was my folks' car, which I wound up using after they uh, had finished with it. And that, too, uh, had no, uh, no mechanical problems. It was a 74 and it had automatic transmission, a three-speed uh, automatic. No mechanical problems, but serious rust in the uh, cowl area. And that required repainting and so forth. Barely, barely worth it with the value of the car. And uh, that overheated once, but I didn't give it a chance to fester. Uh, I uh, had a very short trip to the hardware store, and I heard this noise coming. Boy, this thing... The coolant level had gotten a little low and it started to overheat, but I fixed that real fast so I didn't blow the head gasket, so I was thankful about that. The other was my aunt's car. Uh, she had, uh, when my folks bought their 74 Camback, she bought a 74 Camback. And that too had automatic transmission. And she didn't have any trouble with it either, except uh, she was losing oil, and they couldn't figure out, well, I guess it was a little bit of a mystery, but then they quickly figured it out. On that particular engine, she had an aluminum oil pan to go along with the aluminum engine, I suppose. Well, she may have hit something in the road or some debris. It was enough to fracture the aluminum, so it was actually leaking out that crack in the aluminum and she got a uh, replacement uh, oil pan that was steel this time, and that solved that, that issue. So, again, no real mechanical problems with it except that one. So, altogether, uh, we had good luck with uh, Vegas. By 76, they changed the configuration of the engine. They gave it um, hydraulic valve lifters, and they changed the cylinder design so it was less likely to overheat, less likely to blow a gasket. So they actually improved the car, but this is so typical of what happens when a car gets off to a bad start. You ruin the car's reputation. You fix the problems on an ongoing basis, but by then it's too late. The reputation is damaged. 
people say, I'm never buying one of those again, and the viewer, the, the ownership uh, is lost forever. Once people start buying a different make car, it's awfully difficult to get them back into your showroom. So, with that little <laughs> addendum, uh, I want to uh, thank you again for your viewership. I hope you're entertained by my uh, little, uh, <laughs> uh, talks about the cars that uh, I've had. And uh, I let's reach for 1900 uh, videos. So we'll see what happens. I still have a plentiful supply of videos I haven't put up. So uh, it's getting a little slim pickings uh, during some of these car shows now because it's summer, the tourists down here are gone, so are their cars. But um, we'll try to power through. The fall is again a good time for uh, more car shows with cars that I haven't seen. So.